Hey guys, VBad here with another V Plays, and we're looking at the XP77. This is another American Tier 5 Premium, and on paper, in almost every way, this aircraft is lacking to the XFL1. Damage output's a little bit lower, the airspeed is going to be a little bit lower, and the altitude performance is nearly the same, and the turn performance is actually lower as well. But arguably the guns are going to be a little bit more consistent because you're looking at two 50 cal machine guns and a single 20 millimeter in the hub, which means you get a lot of damage, very consistent damage out of these guns compared to the XF-1 where you have dissimilar gun types, a 37 millimeter derp gun and then the two 762 machine guns. We've already talked a lot about how this airplane is predominantly made out of wood and was really just meant to be Bell trying to create an aircraft that was going to be made out of materials that were not highly desired during wartime so that way they could redirect a lot of those materials for other airframe development like the massive bombers we needed or some of the equipment we needed for building tanks. Let's go ahead and get behind this P-40. There we go. Thanks for coming down here. Gave us a target to shoot at. That aircraft does not have a tail gunner, which is good for us. If you're watching these videos one after the other, I think you'll note that you can already see where the XFL-1 would have been able to probably catch this aircraft already. Really, we're just in a race to keep these guys from capturing this zone because they do have their military base working on this site as well. Now I'm just trying not to get derped by this Yak-9. Just keep an aircraft from getting to another zone at this stage. Maybe I can scare him off my ally's tail. There's a player in a P-40. Sorry, friend. Excellent. Keeping our military facility defended while it looks like our allies are about to grab their garrison. Now I'm going to head towards their military facility. As long as we can keep our flip-flop with them ahead, we'll remain ahead on points. There's a player up here in a D-1 
DB5 Spitfire, which I've mentioned is a very dangerous, very capable airframe. But good news for me, he's actually low on health and not really paying attention. Hey, friend. Actually took that guy out. Took a lot of work to be able to get that to happen. Try and get up underneath this heavy. Bowfighter has a nasty tail gunner. Knocked him out. Helping our bomber get a little bit more survivability. And now we're going to vacate the area. Because I do not want to get hit by any more AA fire. Changing our altitude. Changing our heading slightly. So as the AA starts to predict where we are. We're maneuvering away. Spitfire is inbound on our position. Looks like he's actually going after our bomber right now. That hurricane just has way more damage potential than we do. Not much we can do about that. Little disappointing we haven't taken that zone yet. We have a bomber overhead, you'd think that he would have been able to do something by now, but beggars can't be choosers. I'm going to head over to this military facility and then maybe work my way back over to that military facility. got both military facilities that's going to be great for us they'll be able to start launching strikes on multiple facilities at the same time and the enemy is going to feel under the pressure to really get a site locked down got that aircraft and we captured the zone i think we took a ram on that one unfortunately not sure if it was our guns or our airframe that did the damage on that Air Supremacy, that's what I was hoping for. The military facilities really are a huge force multiplier, which is why I usually prioritize going after offensive zones. The aircraft isn't bad. It's just a very unique, strange-looking aircraft uh, and historically didn't fly really well. They had some issues where they built two prototypes and one of them got into like an inverted, inverted stall, actually, and they... Um, I think it was like an inverted flat spin, if you would, and the pilot was able to get out, fortunately, but it did cost one of the two prototypes. Alright, let's see how we did. We managed to get 9,400. It's a tier 5 premium, so we should get a decent payout from it. Let's get back to the hangar and check this airframe out. Here we are back in the hangar. We're looking at 4,641 experience for our times 2 and 104,000 credits. Uh, not bad. Uh, nearly 70,000 credits of payout if we are non-premium. Again, you can train any crew you would like in this airframe. Uh, and we managed to get second place just underneath the Spitfire 1, although it took quite a bit of work. We were a tier down, but I still think that the aircraft performed fairly well. Now, if we were to go ahead and take the pilot out, send the barracks, 
Now the XFL1 and this airframe, comparing them side by side, they both have the same equipment on them, so same bonuses. But you can see the XP77 when it comes to gun armament has a lower damage output, although slightly more range, survivability higher on the XFL1. Airspeed, XFL1 has slightly higher boost speed but even higher dive speed. And then for maneuverability, you're going to see that the uh, turn time is going to be 9.5 for both of these aircraft. Uh, the roll rate is going to be uh, slightly higher with the XP-77, but the airspeed margins for turning, you can actually be at a higher airspeed in the XFL-1 compared to the 77. Not really sure if that means too much, uh, and you actually have a slower stall speed on the 77. But with the same turn speed, you can see how they'd be comparable in a dogfight. Altitude performance, nearly the same. In fact, the XFL-1 has slightly higher climb rate. So comparing these things with one another, um, they're essentially the same type of airframe, same altitude block. They're meant to kind of be a turn fighter. You get slightly increased range with the 77 and maybe more consistent guns. But the XFL-1, I feel like it has much more potential than the 77. So uh, if you get the option between the two, get the XFL-1, but typically the XFL-1 is usually available. Uh, but just wanted to draw that comparison. As I noticed, there were a lot of similarities between them, but there's definitely not um, enough here to say that the 77 is better than the XFL-1. I think the XFL-1 has it hand down, hands down. Anyways... Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.